Welcome to Bayside Church Online this week. It's our great pleasure to welcome you. It's our great honour to be together and we come together to celebrate our great God. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever your experiences have been over the course of this year, we know that our God is greater and His purposes will prevail. So let's sing His praises together this morning. How great is our God. Please join us as we sing His praise this morning. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps Himself in light And darkness tries to hide trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will say how great. you great in this place today we call you great in this presence of your people gathered online today thank you for all you have been to us this year thank you for all that we promise and see in our future as a result of your presence with us and carry us through our time of worship and fellowship online today we pray it in the name of jesus amen
Hi church family and Merry Christmas for yesterday. I hope you guys had a lovely Christmas and that you have experienced the hope, joy, love and peace that only Christ can offer um, us during this life. 2021 has been somewhat of a tough year. Um, we, well, Rachel got diagnosed with a tumour in her back back in January and has spent um, the whole year um, going through chemotherapy and radiation therapy. And we've still got quite a journey to go before we get to the end of that by the looks of things, but hopefully by the end of January, um, all the treatment should at least be uh, completed and we can reassess and get an update of where we're at uh, with regards to um, her health and her progress. But we have a lot to be thankful for in 2021 over and above the uh, challenges and trials that we've been facing. And um, I'd like to look from first from my side of things um, for especially our home group uh, for um, meals and words of encouragement and prayers and yeah, just staying in contact and being an absolute pillar um, of support for us uh, together with um, other friends from, from church that have contacted regularly and stayed in touch and um, been inquiring of progress reports, etc. And I'd just like to thank um, everyone that has um, sort of done that and, and stepped up and just checked in to make sure that uh, things are going well and that we're, we're cared for uh, from a practical point of view. Yeah, there's also a um, few little angels in the church who give me a call every week and see how I'm going and that's been a real blessing because I can be open and honest with them and yep, some days are good, some days I'm feeling really awful and it's really nice to be open and honest with people. I also get regular, well the family does, get regular uh, cards and those are so encouraging. Little prayers in the cards, little thoughts, we're thinking of you, we're praying for you. And that actually makes, strengthens us to carry on and to get through this treatment. I've only got two left now after Christmas, so I'm really, really, I'm really excited to have just finished those two. It's going to be difficult, but I'm going to push through. Um, it's been a really tough, tough year. And we've, with COVID in hand as well, I've spent a lot of time in hospital with I like the support of Martin and Sarah and my family, but I can just thank all the healthcare workers who are so open, so honest, and just lovely to sit there and, and, and spend some time with me knowing that I'm not allowed visitors. Um, it's been, as I say, a tough year, but I know with my faith, that's what's got me through it. Mm. Yeah, and you know, not only a small group but there's been other church members who have blessed us with food and meals um, again words of encouragement we've had um, extreme um, support from our neighbors um, also you know i think three or four meals we've had yeah. from from next door neighbors and you know it's just really nice um, that uh, we've got that support structure mm. um, work for me has been very understanding have allowed me to take time off when I've needed to, um, you know, looking after my own health as well during it so that I can support Rach. So um, they've been really good from that point of view and uh, I have to be thankful for that as well. Um, and obviously our family and friends, uh, even though they're far away and we haven't been able to have visitation from guys from Sydney and from um, South Africa or England, uh, FaceTime has been a, a yeah. lifesaver and uh, we've managed to stay in touch. Mm. And I also want to just say I'm so thankful for my sister who phones me every day and we can talk for two minutes or we can talk for half an hour. She just is there for me. Being in Sydney and can't come across and can't come and see us, I'm just thankful for family and friends. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, we're not out of the woods yet. We've got a, um, a journey ahead still into 2022, but we are hopeful and we remain faithful and we remain positive that things are moving in the right direction and that God has got this. And um, 
you know, our, our church is, in itself has really had a tough time this year, hasn't it? You know, we haven't just had a, a stumped toe. We've had some serious um, challenges as a church this year. And um, we know God's got it all. Um, mm. We can't always see what his hand is doing and we can't always see the good that's coming from it. But we trust his word and we trust um, his promises that everything that he does is um, for the good. Mm. And we look forward to... Um, realizing those blessings in 2022 and um, being able to acknowledge um, his healing power in our lives. Yeah. And so, yeah, we just uh, thank you all for um, being who you are, being our church family. And um, it is a, an absolute blessing to be part of our church family. And we um, sincerely thank you all for the support and encouragement uh, that you guys constantly give us. So have a great new year and we'll see you soon. Bye. See ya. Join us now as we sing to the good, good father.
I've been having a laugh over these last couple of years at the expressions unprecedented times and a year like no other because I always felt that every year was unlike the one that went before it. But for me, it has been a year like no other in that I've had to face living without Bruce, learning to do things that he used to do for us. And um, he looked after us very well. And um, so I've faced some experiences that have been like no other. And I was surprised during these times um, when it was difficult that I was able to cope. I, I had to deal with some new experiences and I had to um, face days when I was aware that Bruce wasn't going to be here and I was able to cope and not break down. Being able to um, visit family in Sydney and help them in their lockdown experience when they haven't been able to finish the last year of university except online and doing TAFE studies and other experiences has been difficult for me, although I've always put them into God's hands and, um, and always accepted that he will do what is best for them. But now I really didn't have a say whether I was going to help him out or not. So I didn't have a choice. And um, my family have been very, very good when we've had those special dates throughout the year that we remember. They've come and visited. They've kept um, in touch. They've done all the, all the things that would help make those days easier for me and I've realised well I'm not the only one that's grieving they, they've had their moments too but they just done everything they can to help me and my Christian friends and core family have been marvellous in helping me throughout this year Paul advises us in his letters to give thanks in all circumstances he also says, give thanks for everything to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, that I wondered about if I would be able to do that. But just a couple of weeks ago when I had a couple of those down type moments, my reading for the day was Psalm 139, my favourite psalm. And it talks how God has known my life from before I was born until the last day of it. And at no time has he never been in my life with me. And so I'm so thankful to him for his love and his care. I don't know if I've always been thankful, but I've certainly always been aware of his love and care. 2021 has been an incredibly tough year for so many people and was asked recently to do this video and to look back and look at what it is now that we're at the end of 2021 and what is it that I give thanks for. And when it was first asked of me to do this video, I struggle with what I could be grateful for because when you look at it on the surface I shouldn't be grateful for most of the things that have happened to me in 2021 but when I look deeper into it and I think of all the blessings all the blessings that have come out of 2021 I, there are so many things to be thankful for and the first thing that comes to my mind is that I'm thankful for my home group. They have been an incredible tower of strength through this year, not just this year, but the last two years. There are so many people in our home group that are going through challenges in so many different ways. And we have all rallied 
together and we have supported and loved and prayed for each other. And I think 2021, with all the things that have come, has made our home group stronger. It's made it better. It's made us more focused on what is important. So I'm thankful for our home group. Earlier in the year, there was um, uh, an incredible overwhelming feeling of feeling isolated and segregated and just separated from so many different people in my walks of life that I would never have saw coming. And through what has happened to me uh, and the, the challenges that have come for me as an individual has made me realise that I'm not going to allow the segregation to become part of my life. And it's made me refocus on the relationships, not just my family relationships, but my friends, my colleagues, all the people that matter to me, to focus on those, to go deeper on those to spend time with them, go and have coffee with them, go and have chats with them. And it's been a really tough year, but having time away from work over the last several months like I have, has allowed me to look at what's important and to reevaluate that if everything was to fall away, if my house goes, if all the things that I consider possessions goes, if all the things that I place priority on, things of this world, and I'm all I'm left with is my wife and my children and my health, is that enough? And the answer is yes. But it took this COVID time and the challenges that I'm going through right now for me to evaluate that deeply evaluate that and appreciate and look at it as a blessing. I'm also thankful for the, the time that he's allowed me to reflect on all the different things that he's allowed me to have and do. And, and I'm just so thankful for all of those. They're all blessings. But when we're caught in that moment, Sometimes I find I take my eyes off God and I don't prioritise the things that are important, particularly when things are going well. And this year, things haven't gone so well. But it's made me realise that if they don't go well, well, that's okay too. So I'm thankful for everything he's given me. I'm thankful for the challenges he continues to give me and the blessings he continues to give me. And I look forward to 2022. I look forward to the freedom that he's going to give me. Whatever that looks like, I'm okay with that. I wish you all a Merry Christmas. I hope that God blesses you all and that you stay safe. And look forward to seeing you in 2022. So what would you say about your 2021? How would you sum it up? I'm really interested today to examine what you would say to God about your 2021. If you were going to sum it up in just a few words, would you say, you're kidding, Lord, or never again, or surely that's enough? I think for many of us that might be some of the first words that spring to mind when we think about the year that we've lived and the circumstances in which we found ourselves. I certainly look around in my church family and I see enough people who I think that could have been true for you. But really, really interestingly, as we come to the end of this year and as we look into the year that lies beyond, I think God's actually really interested in us being able to say a different word when we come to the end of 2021, no matter what that year has looked like. I think he's really interested in us being able to say thank you. 
Now, that might seem bizarre, that might seem crazy, that might seem totally counterintuitive, but that's what we're going to examine for a few moments today. The idea that somehow, in the midst of whatever your year has looked like, the Lord is yearning for you and longing for you to be able to say thank you, to give thanks for that year, whatever it might have been. Two incredible scriptures speak to this. Paul, a man who knew a lot of struggles and turmoil. We've actually spoken about that a fair bit in our church in the back part of this year, right? We actually spoke about Paul and his journeys, missionary journeys, his meeting with God before that, the turmoil that that actually brought into his life. And we spoke about some of the circumstances in which he found himself. He was shipwrecked. He was flogged. He was imprisoned. He was put on trial. All sorts of crazy things happen to this man. But this same man, twice in his letters, makes quite almost outlandish statements, we might consider them, about this idea. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18, he says this. He says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And then in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20, he says, giving thanks to God the Father for everything. So we've got these two remarkable statements, you know. Give thanks in all circumstances, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and give thanks to God for everything in Ephesians chapter 5. That is wacky. Surely we pull up stumps in thinking about that sometimes and in the circumstances of our lives. And yet... I truly believe the Lord is saying to us, I want you to be able to look back into your 2021, whatever it might have been, and give thanks. And I love the fact that I can look into my church family and see many people who are capable of doing just that. See so many people who are capable of finding that incredible sunshine in the midst of what seems immense shadow. And I know you've heard some of those stories and I hope you've been encouraged by some of those stories because they are remarkable and they are testimony to the power of God. So let's just spend a few moments dwelling here today on these two ideas, giving thanks in all things, all circumstances, and then giving thanks to God for everything. Wow. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, give thanks to the Lord in all circumstances. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus, in all things. Why would this be the case? Well, otherwise, our faith could be purely based on our feelings. It could be purely based on the fact that things are going well, so I'm loving the Lord. And if things aren't going so well, well, what does that do to my relationship with him? Well, it could make the hugest difference to that. See, God doesn't want a faith based on feelings. He knows that's not going to last. He knows that's going to founder. I hope you know that experience in your life where you came to the Lord, where he met you, where you received his love and his forgiveness and his grace and his mercy and the feelings that that produced in you were just profound. They were amazing. They were incredible. But those feelings aren't going to last in quite that way for all of your life for all of your existence. We all know that that's true. Feelings fade. Our faith needs to remain supreme. And if our faith is based on our feelings, we're going to find ourselves in all sorts of unhelpful situations when things aren't going so well. And so the Lord says, give thanks in all circumstances that your faith might be based on more than your feelings. You say, we won't always feel great, but God is still great. He is the unchanging. He is the unconditional bringer of good things and blessing into our lives and unconditional positive regard for us and our circumstances. It won't always feel that way, but God is still that way. That's how it works. We are not promised a trouble-free life. Instead, what we're promised is this unbreakable connection with the Lord in heaven. That's actually the promise. That's why we can still give thanks in all circumstances because we know that he is with us. He is journeying towards our future right alongside us, persevering with us, crying with us, grieving with us, sorrowing with us, celebrating and triumphing with us also. But he is always there. 
Not promised a trouble-free life, but promised this unbreakable connection with the Lord in heaven who's going to carry us through everything. It's all based on our faith. It's a matter of trust. It's a matter of trust and a deep hope and persevering understanding that God's going to make that right. God's going to sort that out. God's going to bring me through. I'm giving thanks even in the midst of the storm because he's going to bring me through. And it's all about perspective, right? All of this is about perspective. I guess we all know that. But I read this this week and I thought, this is really quite helpful. This is some ideas that some people came up with around this idea of how do you give thanks in all circumstances? And they put it like this. They put some of these things on the table and maybe you can relate to some of these. They said, I'm thankful for the alarm that wakes me up in the morning because it means I'm alive. I'm thankful for the dishes in the sink because it means that I'm sharing a house with other people, sharing a life with other people. I'm thankful for the lawn that needs mowing and the house that needs cleaning because it means that I have a home. I have a place where I belong. I'm thankful for the taxes that I have to pay because it means I have an income and then I can look after my own needs. I'm thankful for that person in church behind me who can't sing in tune because it means that I can hear and I'm able to enjoy that reality of hearing. I'm thankful for the fact that we have people everywhere, and how true is this of our nation at the moment, complaining about the government, because that means we have freedom of speech, and we all have our opportunity to have our say and keep our opportunity open to share what we think about things around us in the world. And I'm thankful for the tiredness that I experience at the end of the day, because it means that I've been productive. Now, those are only a few very small examples today, but hopefully you can see into this reality. There's a way to be thankful in all circumstances, even to the things that bring the burn, even for the things that challenge you and make things difficult and the things that you think, I wish that was over. There might have been many experiences in your 2021 where you think, I wish that was over. And yet the Lord has continued to bring you through and the ability to give thanks in all those circumstances and keep your faith strong, no matter what's happening with your feelings, is so, so important. This is God's will for you. That's what 1 Thessalonians 5 says. It's God's best for you. God's will for you is always the best for you. He has a heart for you as his beloved child to say, I want the best for you in life. So his will for you is his best for you, and that is to be this person of thanksgiving. That's what he loves about you. He loves for you to have that experience. So if you want to know what God's will is for you, I know a lot of people ask that question a lot of the time. What's God's will for me? Well, here's a great example of something very concrete that God says is his will for you. One little sentence, give thanks in all circumstances. God's will for you, his best for you. It's not as hard to discern God's will as we think. That's God's will for you, for me, for all of us. He is always good to you. And he is always good for you. Keep that in mind next time that something has you thinking, how can I give thanks for this? The God who is always good to you and for you, that's your faith. That's what's going to sustain you through those experiences. Let's go to this other passage for a moment as well. First Thessalonians 5, give thanks in all circumstances. So maybe getting through circumstances that are not ideal, and we know we're struggling with, but we give thanks in those circumstances, maybe we find that somewhat palatable. It's still difficult, right? I get that. But it's God's will for us. This next idea, Ephesians chapter 5, might be even more challenging for us. Give thanks to God the Father for everything. Wow. Now that's a bold statement. Give thanks to God the Father for everything. So that appears to suggest that we should even give thanks to him for the hard things, for the difficult circumstances, for those matters that actually just are really, really troubling and difficult for us. And we all know people in our own lives, people in our church family, people in our wider world who are going through really, really tough experiences and you can put your hand up and say, I don't get it. I don't understand how people are expected to give thanks to God for those things. Well, I think there's only one way to explain that. It's challenging. I get it. It's difficult. 
but the hindsight of my own life, and I think many of us would be able to acknowledge that this is the case, the reason why we can do this, that we can give thanks to God for everything, even those things that are so, so difficult sometimes and so, so unwelcome in our lives, is because they grow us like nothing else. They actually draw us back to him in a way that is profound and is beyond what we can imagine, even in our best moments of saying, I'm walking in the sunshine, I'm delighting in the blessings and the providence of God and I feel very close to him. We just grow in dramatic and profound ways when we walk through the valley of darkness with our hand in his, knowing that he is there. So I think that's at the heart of this idea that we can give thanks to God the Father for everything, not because we're loving it, but because he's loving us and he's getting us through that really, really hard journey. And we know that it's actually going to produce in us fruit and growth and character change and transformation that's going to be very good for us down the track. That's a beautiful and deep reality of this story in our lives. These experiences grow us like nothing else can. God doesn't welcome them into our lives, but God accommodates them and uses them in powerful ways to change us. Our weaknesses, our trials, our burdens, our hardships, what do they do? They prove the sufficiency of his grace. They prove that God alongside us is enough for any challenge in this world. And that, again, is what I see in so many people in our church family and in the world around me who are loving God and following him. They prove the sufficiency of his grace because they carry the burdens and the trials and the hardships of life in a way that is just incredible to perceive and to walk alongside. They prove the sufficiency of God's grace. God's grace is enough to carry you through all those things. It reminds me of that beautiful verse that is so precious to so many people. Again, from Paul's life, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9, where the Lord spoke to him about his own hardship and said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Not my power is somewhat at its best or my power does okay when you're weak. My power is made perfect in your weakness. When we come to him with nothing more than just ourselves and our open arms and our will to be carried by the Lord. In that weakness, he meets us and brings his strength. His grace is sufficient and we grow and prosper in amazing ways because our faith develops in remarkable ways through those experiences. That's why we can give thanks to God the Father for everything. Not because we're loving going through it, but we're loving the Lord who's going to carry us out the other side and prove that he's refined us and shaped us through the fire into even more and more his person and his follower and his child on that journey. That's the power of this story. It's totally true. You look back on your 2021, not everything is good. I get it. For many people, there will be the circumstance where they say to themselves, yet yeah, this year's been harder almost than any other. That can be true. Not everything is good, but God is always good. And God can and will use it for good. That's the other great dynamic that's at, in practice here, that's at work here in us. Romans 8.28, we know that in all things, God works together for the good of those who love him. So for our good, he is working through even the most miserable of circumstances to bring about beautiful things in us and others. That's the sovereign power of God. That's how he works in this world. Not everything is good, but he can and will use it for good. And he remains good to you and good for you. These are the foundations on which we stand so that we can carry these scriptures into next year because that's really my heart for you today as we wrap this up, is to say, 2021, whatever it's been, I pray that you can find that opportunity to say to the Lord, not just, never again, Lord, that's enough, Lord, you've got to be kidding, Lord, that you can somehow also say to him, thank you, Lord, because that's going to be a great foundation to build on to go into what lies in 2022. 
Because who knows what that year might bring. All we know is that God will be there. God will be longing to walk alongside you. And if you bring the spirit of gratitude that we're speaking about today, the spirit of thanksgiving, it's going to make that journey so much more fruitful and fruit bearing for you and for others around you in your life. I just pray that we can all be people that carry this concept of gratitude and thanksgiving very powerfully into 2022 because it'll change what that year looks like for us. It'll change our whole circumstance. Just in closing, I want to reflect for a moment on my own experience of that. And this would be an experience that I have in common with many of you who are watching today because you've walked challenging journeys in 2021 as well. 2021 has been an incredible year in my life, a year that I use the word that many people in our congregation roll their eyes about, unprecedented, right? Unprecedented to go through this experience this year. But what has happened in my life is this. And I've seen it happen in the lives of others as well. So I'm not just testifying to my own experience. I'm testifying to the experience of others. What has happened is this. I have never been closer to the power of God, to the presence of God, and to the passion of God for me as his beloved child than I have been through this experience. So when I think about that, somehow I'm drawn to be able to say, I can give thanks in all those circumstances. And in fact, in the most amazing way, I can give thanks for all those circumstances because I have seen his power. I have seen and felt his presence and I have known his passionate love for me, even in the incredibly challenging moments of these experiences for me over the course of this journey. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. May we all be people of thanksgiving today and always. It's going to be a great way to tackle your new year. If you want to put one New Year's resolution in your back pocket, make it that one that the spirit of thanksgiving is going to flow through you and out of you into your world because it'll change your 2022 in the most remarkable way. I pray blessing on you, encouragement on you and hope for this journey that lies ahead as we continue what happens from here into 2022 and beyond. God is good, God has good and hope-filled plans for you and as you grab a hold of the gratitude and thanksgiving that he desires to put inside of you, thanks in all circumstances, thanks to him for everything, great things are going to be happening. God bless you. God bless all of us to be people of thanksgiving on the journey that lies ahead. So we're going to come in the spirit of thanksgiving right now and bless his name. In the sunshine and the shadow wherever we go. Let's be people who can bless the name of the Lord who gives and takes away. Let's sing together.
blessing to be before the Lord, singing His praises and staying in the spirit of thanksgiving. I pray that that's the spirit with which you go forward into this week and into the year that lies ahead. We really look forward to welcoming you back here to church next Sunday. There won't be church online next week. There'll be church in person right here in the building. We'd love you to be here with us. And in the meantime, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Amen. We look forward to seeing you very soon.